I'm going to give you a scenario. You're a U.S. Army soldier in the Iraq War, 2003, and all of a sudden, Geraldo Rivera is giving away all your secret information live on TV right before your combat mission. How mad would you be? Well, the US Army during the 2003 Iraq invasion, they wanted to implement something called the Embedded Reporters. And essentially, the US military wanted everything to be reported live, and I mean everything. Some news reporters were going to be trusted with airstrike locations, and some news reporters were going to be told exactly where the 101st Airborne were going to go, and they accidentally gave away all their information. Now, before we get into all of this, please like this video. It helps the video out a ton, but it also lets me know whether or not I need to keep making videos like this. Please like the video. Okay, before we get into Geraldo Rivera giving away top secret information, let's talk about why embedded reporters with the U.S. military. Now look, this is not a new concept. Reporters have always been embedded with U.S. troops. Essentially, troops would be on the battlefield, they would report what happens, and then they would write the news story for everybody back home to have an idea of what's going on in the war zone. But the reason why this was going to be a lot more different in the 2003 Iraq War, they were going to do this live. Now, for journalists to report live, that's one thing, but to report live 500 feet away from the enemy, that's another thing. What I'm trying to say is this has never been done before in military history and the US military learned a lot from it. Let's talk about the good before we get to the bad. Number one, US journalists were actually trusted with the whole shock and awe airstrike thing. For those of you who don't know, shock and awe is essentially a military tactic where you lay down freedom on your opposing forces. And here's what that broadcast looked like for the entire world. Now, I was in third grade when I watched that live. My parents let me stay up before school to watch that. But what's pretty crazy is even at the time, I was like, wow, they're getting all these perfect camera shots. How do they know where all these airstrikes are coming in? It took me until like two days ago to realize producers obviously knew where these airstrikes were going to happen. National Geographic producer Charles Poe and editor Chris Kral are among the few Western journalists left. We knew a few hours in advance it was going to happen. We couldn't say anything to anybody, to Iraqis, to, to anybody. We just went back to the hotel, got set up, and prepared to broadcast. And when you think about that today, all we hear is fake news, fake news, and we can't trust journalists. But back then, you trusted journalists. You had no reason not to trust them. So this really is the first exposure of live warfare in the 21st century for the whole world to see. Another really famous battle scene was Objective Curly. You're talking about it's a remarkable uh, scene. What we're seeing now is, uh, I don't know if these are medics or soldiers running across now. And yes, that's a U.S. soldier firing a shotgun from a stretcher. Now that is super patriotic. And that leads me to my first point. You see, the U.S. military with this embedded journalism, yes, it's giving a lot of info out there, but it's also a political war machine. You're starting to see soldiers in action. These are America's heroes. Okay, and the moment you've all been waiting for, Geraldo Rivera giving away top secret information live on TV. Now, to be fair to Geraldo Rivera, he's been in a lot of war zones and he has a lot of experience, so I think he was just really getting into the moment and wanted to report exactly what was going on, and he wanted to formulate a story for the people back home. The only issue is Geraldo was drawing actual battle plans and maps in the sand and also giving away other information from like the 3rd Infantry Division and other types of units. So the 101st Airborne was so pissed off at him, they essentially kicked him out of Iraq, brought him back into Kuwait. However, when I was digging up information for this YouTube video, I found this gem of Geraldo Rivera. Very location would suffer a casualty, just as some of these companies were being rotated home. At the Shkin Fire Base, uh, hard by the Pakistani border, it's a place uh, that is now called the evilest in Afghanistan. It earned its reputation yesterday, certainly. It looks like Geraldo found himself in Afghanistan with the 10th Mountain Division in November of 2003. That's roughly eight months later after he got kicked out of Iraq. And one other quick thing, I think Geraldo learned his lesson because he actually reported on the troops leaving Iraq in 2011 when he was in Kuwait. And over the next several days, I can't say exactly when, all of our combat troops will have been successfully withdrawn from that bloody conflict. And you'll notice Geraldo even says, hey, look, I can't give away that information. So I think he learned his lesson. 
But what about reporters who were lying about their time in Afghanistan? Now, this is going to annoy a lot of you. There was also a news reporter who lied about his helicopter getting shot down. When the Chinook helicopters we were traveling in at the start of the Iraq war were fired on and forced down for three days. And Facebook, they had no memory of Williams being on the one chopper that did take a rocket propelled grenade. That's right, Brian Williams got called out by somebody on Facebook saying, hey, I don't remember you being in my helicopter. And look, Brian Williams, he did end up apologizing, but at the time, he lied to millions upon millions of Americans. And this was another journalist who was a war correspondent, and he had nothing to lie about. I mean, he was sort of there. Now, another issue embedded journalists were sort of doing was giving a non-objective perspective to what they are seeing in front of them. In fact, there are academic articles that studied war correspondents in Iraq. Here's what was happening. Correspondents, instead of reporting on the troops, and the troops are doing this, and the troops are moving out like this, they would say, I'm doing this, and I'm moving over here. And a lot of U.S. citizens actually found that the news story and the reporting was more about the embedded journalists and not about their soldiers. Because let's get one thing clear, all U.S. citizens cared about was their troops making it to Baghdad, taking out Saddam, and making it back home. And I'm not trying to make this sound harsh because embedded journalists, they are people too, but U.S. citizens, they cared about the soldiers, not about the well-being of the journalist. Now, personally, if you ask me, I think the U.S. military learned a massive lesson about this live stream of embedded journalists heading to Baghdad. I don't think they will ever do it again the way they did. I think if the U.S. military ever wants to do more embedded journalism on this scale, they're going to try and vet individual journalists. Basically, that translates to they're going to try and make sure those news reporters are not going to give away top secret information. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments about embedded journalists. Were you old enough to remember all of this going down? Are you learning something new? Leave a comment, like, subscribe. We'll see you later.